Have you been applying and applying to cybersecurity roles and continuously get rejection letters and rejection emails? Trust me, I've been there and have dealt with that same type of issue and it can be very discouraging in your job seeking pathway. I wanna go over several things that you can do to increase your chances of landing that first cybersecurity role. Let's have the discussion. Let's talk about it. Welcome back to Struggle Security, but we are normalizing struggling in cybersecurity. And today we're going to be talking about what to do after the rejections, after the rejections for the cybersecurity roles that you've been applying and applying to. And I want to equip you with some things to help you land that first role. But I do want to start off first by having a discussion about what's happening within the cybersecurity field, because there's some things that can be a little bit alarming. Right. We've seen in some of the news cycles and some of the reports that cybersecurity organizations have been doing layoffs. I mean, when you look at layoffs.fyi, which is an interesting website that goes over current layoffs that's been happening in the tech industry. And when we look at them, we see that organizations like Trellis, organizations like Rapid7, SecureWorks, these are cybersecurity companies who have been doing layoffs within the last several months or so. We can even see from consulting firms, one of the big four consulting firms, we can see some of the KPMG layoffs from a website, a forum that I go to called Fishbowl. And we see some people who are anonymous that work for that organization who have said that they have been suffering layoffs. And we've also seen that within the news cycles. It can be a bit difficult, right? You're getting these rejection letters, but you're also seeing that, hey, within the field, they're doing layoffs. I want to encourage you and inform you that, hey, this is not the full story of what's happening across the cybersecurity industry. Although there are layoffs, although you might be getting these rejection letters, that does not mean that you cannot obtain your first cybersecurity role. And in today's video, we're going to be discussing several things that you can do and that you should do in order to increase your chances to getting that first row. Let's jump right into it to number one. Okay, guys, let's jump. This is probably the most difficult one. And I knew that this was one of the most difficult ones for me as well. So after many times you go through several rounds of interviews with the company, or if you even just do one interview or have contact with a hiring manager or a hiring recruiter, one thing that happens is that when you don't get selected or you get rejected, you get a rejection email or you might get a call, right? Sometimes you don't get any of that. But if you have the contact in information of people from the organization, this is what you should do. You should ask for feedback, ask for feedback, right? And again, that's very difficult to do in the midst of a rejection, because after you get rejected, Many times we just want to kind of just say on to the next one. I don't really care about that organization anymore. I don't want to know anything about what they're talking about, but I want to encourage you to ask for feedback. I want to encourage you to do this because whenever you ask for feedback, you might get valuable insights into areas where you might be a bit weak in your job search or areas of improvement, right? They might say, Hey, we saw that you were very good at this, very proficient at this, but this is more of what we were looking for. Or they might just say, hey, we had an abundance of candidates and there was someone who was more experienced to be able to accomplish or be able to work in this particular role. So sometimes it's not necessarily you, but it could just be the competition. Understanding some of this will allow you to be better equipped for that next interview or for that for that next role. So that's the first piece here. Ask for feedback if you have contact information for the interviewers, the hiring managers for that particular organization that you got the rejection from. Number two, right? I think that this is what I always encourage people to do. Number two is to keep applying, keep applying and keep applying. I've had conversations with individuals who at times might have gotten rejected from one role or rejected from one organization and they stop. They start to dwell into, well, I didn't get that role with this organization. So, you know, I'm probably not good enough or they might doubt themselves or doubt their ability to flourish or to be able to grow a cybersecurity where I think that when you have a very small sample size, it can very much so, I guess, limit your mindset or limit your understanding that, hey, even though I wasn't successful here, even though I got rejected here, this other organization might want me. So. When I say keep applying, I'm not only saying apply to the next role, but apply even more frequently. 
because this is a numbers game, right? This is a numbers game. The more organizations that you apply for, for roles that you think that you can fit into, the higher the chance there is for you to acquire one of those roles. Where with the cybersecurity, if you get one role, if you get one piece of experience, then that will open you up to all other types of opportunities and all other types of industries and organizations within the field. So you wanna apply, continuously apply, not dwell on one of the rejections, but also apply more frequently because this is a numbers game. And not only apply more frequently, but apply to different platforms as well. You might only be doing um, applications for LinkedIn. Expand that search to applying on Indeed or applying on the DICE website. And not only applying to one type of role, your goal might be penetration testing. You might not only want to apply to penetration testing roles, but you might want to expand that application process to that of SOC or Security Operations Center Analysts or Security Administrators or even looking at different industries like the Department of Defense or government type of roles. Right. Or even look for something that will allow you to pivot into cybersecurity, maybe something like a network engineering or a network administrator type of role or system administrator. You know, so this advice is to keep applying right to review. Keep applying. Number two, apply to a greater number of roles. Number three, apply to a greater range of roles. And number four, maybe apply to roles that will allow you to pivot into cybersecurity. There was a lot there, but hopefully that makes a lot of sense. The next one that I would say is that number three, this piece of advice is continue to develop your skills as you are applying. So, right, you're not only just applying to get a job, but you also want to keep getting better after every single application. Thank you to Nord for being today's video sponsor. And if you've ever heard about the Nord VPN product, then you'd be happy to hear about Nord Pass for Business which is a password management product, which allows you to focus on the most important aspects of your business, which is the actual business. Let's talk about this. In this year's M Trends in 2023, we found that there are several threat groups, whether in China or in Russia, some of the most infamous ones, they are still utilizing password spraying attacks and password exfiltration attacks in order to accomplish their malicious goals. Right. These are still passwords are still in the forefront for some of the most sophisticated attackers today. NordPass has several features that can help protect you and your employees from some of the current cybersecurity threats today. One thing that we want to talk about is starting at number one is that it will allow you to pull in and manage credentials from different accounts. So you can pull in your username and passwords from um, applications like Google Chrome or your Internet Explorer or any other type of account that you might have to log into. So it allows for more of a centrally managed password vault for all of your most important and critical applications. Number two, we wanna talk about that a lot. It also allows you to set company-wide passwords and policies. Many times if there is a data exfiltration of passwords and usernames and credentials, they're typically encrypted, right? They are typically jarbled up to where the bad guys have to go through some type of decryption tools in order to get the clear text or the passwords to use on for your organization once they get in. Now, one thing that um, setting the company policies internally is that you can set things like characters, the amount of words, the length, if you wanna utilize symbols, right? These are very important to slowing down the bad guys to being able to decrypt your password. The longer, the more complex your passwords are, the more difficult it is for the bad guys to be able to use them during an attack and NordPass allows you to be able to set those. You can set them as strict as possible, but it can be um, across your organization. Another one is that it also allows you to evaluate your password health. So in many cases, we have very weak passwords. We have passwords that we reuse. How many of you have the same password that you use maybe 10 or 15 years ago? Maybe the same one for your Facebook account. You might also use within your business accounts. One thing that it does is that um, there's a feature within NordPass that allows you to evaluate your password help once you pull in all those credentials from all of those different sources. So you can make each account very unique to the application, the business applications that you use within your organization. Another feature is the breach vulnerability scanner. So in many cases, you might have passwords that have been compromised through some type of 
um, account that you might have logged into several years ago, right? There are many very popular organizations are still getting hit today. So your usernames and password that you might have reused might still be in the password dumps and in the vaults for some of those previous hacks. One thing that NordPass for Business has as a feature is that it does a data breach scanner. So it goes to many of these sources, it goes to many of these vaults and sees that, hey, are the credentials that you're using for your business accounts the same ones that were captured within this hack for some large organization that you had an account with? So that is very important. So I think that all of those features combined allows you to have better password health within your organization, even in the event if the bad guys get in. So I don't want to just present you with all of these features. I don't want to just put it in front of you and explain them. But I also want you to go ahead, go to the comment section, go to the first comment and also the description section to be able to try it out for yourself. There is a code in there for and you can just click it and it'll take you to a page where you can try out the NordPass for business for yourself. Don't just take my word for it, but go ahead and try it out for a three month free trial. Again, thank you, Nord, for being a sponsor of our video and let's get back to the content. Now, the last one here that I want to lead you all with is search and network beyond the norm, right? Many times we want to apply from job postings that we might see on LinkedIn. And that's, and it's nothing wrong with that, but that can at times leave you a little bit limited in your ability to expand your search, right? So one thing that I want to encourage is that you join different communities, online and local communities in cybersecurity that would allow you to increase your cybersecurity um, professional network and allow you to be more informed of what's happening in the field. So one of those is, or I want to give several suggestions for ISC Squared, right? ISC Squared has a learning community and also a certification community. And this is the ISC Squared is the the administrator of the CISSP certification, which is very popular in cybersecurity, but they also have a forum and membership type of org organization. And it can keep you abreast of different roles going on, certification opportunities. Sometimes you can get vouchers. So I would encourage you to join organizations like those or even very more interesting ones, right? The EISAC, right? ISACs are stand for Information Sharing and an Analysis Center. So the EISAC stands for the Electricity Information Sharing and Analysis Center. And this is a group that shares information about threats, vulnerabilities, incidents, that happen for cybersecurity within the electrical utility organizations or like the electrical grid. So very interesting. Or another one is B-Sides. B-Sides have many local groups, right? And they're local community driven cybersecurity groups where they have conferences. They also have forums, meetups, all different types of things based upon where you are geographically. And they're all around the world. So joining professional organizations like ISC Squared, EISAC or any of the, the types of ISACs or even B-sides for your local uh, groups, you can get in contact with other cybersecurity professionals who might be abreast to other cybersecurity opportunities, right? You might got it rejected from one, but this person that you meet at a B-sides conference might have an understanding of, hey, we're hiring here. I'm a hiring manager. And I see that you have these type of skills. I'm going to bring you in. You know, those type of opportunities can come about from joining professional organizations. And even another one that I want to bring you to is on Twitter or X. Twitter or X, there are many people who have conversations about cybersecurity on that platform. And I want to reference you to one, a gentleman, his name is Marcus Carey, and his tag is at Marcus Carey. And he does something called like cybersecurity job thread feeds, where he posts, hey, if anybody's looking for job threads or if anybody looking for cybersecurity opportunities, post them here. And this gives visibility into organizations who are currently hiring for cybersecurity roles. Now, this goes from entry level all the way to advanced and chief information security officer roles. So I heavily advise you to follow individuals like Marcus and other individuals on Twitter or X in order for you to stay abreast of cybersecurity opportunities and roles that are current. So let's just do a quick little review. The first advice that I said is ask for feedback even after the rejection, that's probably the hardest thing to do, but it can enable you to understand areas of opportunity that you might have for interviews. Keep applying, keep applying, you keep applying, keep applying in frequency, apply to different uh, uh, job board 
environments or platforms, apply to different industries, or even look for pivots into cybersecurity, like in that of networking or system administration. The next one is to continue to develop your skills even as you are applying. The next one that, and the final one that we talked about was not only to keep applying, right? But also expand beyond the norm where you're going on Twitter or X, following individuals who might have understandings of cybersecurity roles, but also join professional cybersecurity organizations, right? So hopefully this is valuable to you a lot there. I know I spoke probably pretty fast, but hey, at any time, take a look at the video, rewind this, this back, share with other friends and people within the cybersecurity community who are interested. And again, this is struggle security, where we are normalizing struggling in cybersecurity. And hopefully this has alleviated one of your struggles. Rejection can be difficult. And hopefully this video has helped you to alleviate some of that ap apprehension or even the feeling of rejection and maybe some inability there. So I think that you can still do it. And hopefully these pieces of advice can help you get to your goal of landing that first cybersecurity role. If you have any questions or concerns or comments, all of the links there will be there within the comment section. And if you have any comments, please put it in the comment section. Again, struggle security, normalizing struggling and cybersecurity. Thanks.